Did I ever tell you about that time I was making a living selling cake to Russians? Guess not. If you ever visit Russia, there will be a few things you shouldn't miss. For some, the honeys. For others, the honey cake, also known as Midevik. Sweet as a nut, full of honey, and a popular choice for cake sitting. Yeah, you learn something new every day. Ingredients. We find ourselves with the usual suspects. Flour, all purpose. For, well, all purposes, apparently. Honey. This one is wild flour. Make sure it's clear, runny honey. Buckwheat honey is another treat all by itself, for everyone involved. Sugar, granulated white sugar, but you can use demerara or muscovado to great effect too. Baking soda, we don't just use this to make better biltong than your dad. Fun fact, honey is acidic and reacts with the baking soda to make stuff airy and fluffy. Eggs, fresh and large. That wraps up the stuff we need for the biscuit part. For the cream filling, it's also pretty straightforward. Cream, whipping cream, powdered sugar. You can leave this out or reduce the amount if you want the cake less sweet. Sour cream, known as smetana in Russia. And like the heavy hand in Russia, optional, but kind of necessary if you want a good result. Finally, we have a secret little ingredient, bee pollen. Also optional, but as necessary as OnlyFans for lazy millennials. That wraps up the boring bit. So let's get cracking. Eggs, of course, three to be exact, followed by sugar. We are about to cream this, meaning blending the fuck out of it until it's foamy. Next, add the honey and make it dizzy. Pour your eggy foamy honey business into a large bowl. Next, sieve the flour and the baking soda. Give it a whisk to make sure it's all evenly dispersed. Add the flour mixture to the eggy honey mixture, folding and stirring gently until you have a smooth batter. Cover it with plastic wrap. Tell Richard how handsome he looks today wow. and let it rest for an hour at room temp. Turn your oven to 160 degrees Celsius or 320 degrees Fahrenheit while you go keep yourself busy with something useful. To help you stay out of trouble, we're gonna cut up some silicone. We'll be making this midweek rectangular. Although, do whatever shape your heart desire. For that, we need a few rectangular silicone baking mats or high quality wax paper. I cut mine 30 centimeters or 11.8 inches long by 10.5 centimeters or 4.1 inches wide. To make fast work, you need four to eight of these. Otherwise, you'll be cooking them one by one like a rookie and only be done on the 28th of July, 2061, just in time to watch Halley's Comet fly by. Now grab your Richard and spread a thin layer of batter onto each piece of whatever you settled on with a long palette knife. Aim for one credit card thick. Place the battered covered silicone mats onto oven trays. Bake in the oven for about six to eight minutes or until deep golden brown. Remove the trays from the oven using your bare hands like a big boy. Just kidding, use fucked up old oven mats like me. Like Corey Taylor said, the blister exists. If you have the fridge or freezer space, cool the biscuit sheets down in there and then carefully remove them by flipping over and peeling off the silicone or wax paper. Store the cooled biscuit layers between sheets of parchment to avoid them sticking. This is more for those living in humid areas, like your mom's basement. Repeat the process with the rest of your batter until you have a fat stack of honey biscuits. You can trim each sheet up a bit on the sides, but it's fully optional. Once that's done, you want to take about four extra sheets of biscuit and blitz it up finely, along with the trimmings, if you have them. Or beat it with a rolling pin, like a Neanderthal. Either way, this is to cover the midwick. The last thing you want to do is use all your layers and realize you don't have crumb left. Tears will follow. This is also where you grind up your bee pollen and add it to the crumbs. Do this separately in a spice grinder or a pestle and mortar. Almost there, so hang on to your nipples. Next, we want to whip up the cream along with the icing sugar. Kitchen aid if you can. My chefs pulled my whisk attachment through their asses, so I'm rolling with Jane over here. Share my videos with your contacts so I can buy a new whisk, please. I'm sure you don't want to watch me whisk stuff for hours with a plastic cow-elephant hybrid made in China. Once that's whipped up, fold it through the sour cream until fully homogenous and looking like this. Finally, time to layer this bitch. Grab a suitable plate or wooden board. Put a bit of cream on it to make sure shit don't slide. Next, we start with one layer biscuit and spread the cream onto it. You don't want to be too generous with the cream, but don't be stingy either. Kind of between your reality and your dreams. With each next layer, gently press the biscuit down onto the cream and keep the sides tidy as you continue your journey to the top. You finish with a layer of cream and make sure the sides are covered with cream too, because otherwise... Now crumb that cake good. Get it everywhere and be generous, like your dreams. Sprinkle, 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 pat, pat, pat.
sprinkle some more and we are done. Put it in the fridge for an hour or so before you cut it or store it in the freezer, sealed it tight. I don't care what you do with yours, eat it, freeze it, sit on it, I'm getting stuck into mine. And like William Wallace said, they can take away our rights, they can take away our lives, but they can never take away our honey cake or something along those lines. There you go, friends. Another Ahuyeni recipe for you. For free. From Russia. With love. Ah, one second. And before there's any sitting on that cake, make sure you give it a taste, will you? Okay? Let me know what you think. Alright. Bye-bye.